Today's deep dive includes digipeding and eye gating on APRS Droid. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. I wanted to do a deep dive today on digipeding and eye gating. I just ran out of time in the first video of this series. Now, in case you missed that one, this is a fork by NA7Q. Uh, of APRS Droid, and one of the new features that he's included is digipeating and eye gating. Now, the cool thing about this is you can use it with just about any radio. Today, I've got mine synced up to the UV Pro radio, but you could also use something like a MobiLink TNC. This happens to be, I think, a TNC3, or you could even use something like the D74 radio that doesn't have digipeating uh, capabilities built into it. So let's go ahead and dive into the settings on the phone and get started. All right, so right away, uh, I'm in the hub. I'm going to touch the three dots in the top right corner, and then we're going to choose preferences. Coming into Preferences, we want to scroll down until we find Digipeating Preferences. So let's go ahead and go into that. Now, I do want to enable the Digipeater, but I only want it to Digipeat stations that it hears direct. Uh, this is going to... Digipeating is obviously going to kill the battery on any device faster. So what we want to do is we want to limit the digipeating that is going on. If we just need a small coverage area, uh, let's say I'm out with the HT, I can't quite get into a digipeater with the HT, but I can hook up this to another HT that's got a much better antenna on it and be able to get out. So I would want to uh, digipeat my own traffic that was heard locally, but any other uh, things that are being digipeated in the area or packets that are being uh, passed in the area, I don't want to necessarily digipeat those. Now, you'll have to do this on a case-by-case -case basis and decide what works best for you. But for today, I'm only going to digipeat what I'm hearing direct. Now, in the digipeater path, uh, it is set by default to wide 1, comma, wide 2. Since we're only digipeating what we hear direct, I'm going to take that wide 2 out and just leave it at wide 1. Uh, everything else I think will be okay here. The dedupe timeout will leave set to 30 seconds, and that should be sufficient. And guys, that's really as easy as it is to get digipeating set up on this device. Now, we do want to test this. I'm going to be sending a beacon with a D75, and I've got a, uh, I'm using the club call sign on that radio today just to make it a little easier for you guys to figure out which radio is which. But the club call is K4FUN, K4 Fun. So let's go ahead and go back to the uh, phone for a second. And instead of this hub view, I'm actually going to go into the log view right here. This will make it a little bit easier to tell what's getting digipeated uh, and what's not. Oh, I probably should turn off my main digipeter too. All right, now we won't have any confusion with that guy digipeating everything as well. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a shot. You can see I've got the D75 right here. This is the one that's got the K4 Fun call sign on it. And then this is the uh, BTEC UV Pro that is connected to APRS Droid. So let's go ahead and just turn on the beacon for that radio. You'll see the beacon uh, was received and digipeated. You can see that right there because it shows what's digipeated in orange and it tells you that it was digipeated right up there in that top line. So that seems to be working. Now, what if we want to take this a step further and actually eye gate everything that's being heard uh, over this radio to the internet? That's the difference between digipeating and eye gating. Digipeating is just repeating it back over RF eye gating actually injects that into the internet. So what we'll do is we will utilize the phone's uh, cellular connection to the internet to be able to uh, take the packets that we hear and inject those into the internet. So let's go ahead once again and let's click on those three dots right up at the top and come down to preferences again. 
This time we're going to slide down until we find the iGate preferences. All right, so starting right up there at the top, that's where we would enable the iGate, and we're going to do that in just a second. Suppress the APRS IS traffic log. I don't want to do that. I actually want to see any of that traffic in the log that we were looking at just a second ago where it showed we were digipeded. The server you should be able to leave at default if you're in the U.S. Uh, if you're outside of the U.S., you might want to set that to a server a little bit closer to your home location. I'm not going to filter any incoming packets right now, though we could. Uh, the TCP socket timeout set for 120 seconds. We'll leave that uh, alone. And we want to tell it to uh, retry the connection at a certain interval. And that is currently set to 30 seconds. That should also be sufficient. Now, I do want to send my packets to RF and APR, uh, APRS IS. That means they should be digipeated uh, over RF and they should be injected into the APRS IS system. So we definitely want that to happen. And then I also want to enable the bidirectional eye gate. Uh, that should allow us, if we send a message, to also get a reply. That could be helpful. Let's say if you're contacting one of the bots out there, like WXBot, wanting a weather report, you'll be able to send that message out. It'll hit the internet using your phone's uh, internet connection and then be delivered back to you over RF. Uh, recently heard station timeout is currently set to 30 minutes. That should be sufficient. That just says that uh, if this Digipeter has heard a station in the last 30 minutes, then it's going to send messages, traffic, to that particular station. If it hasn't heard that station in the last 30 minutes, it's going to ignore, uh, ignore all of that traffic that might be coming in from the uh, internet side and not send it out over RF. The DigiPath is currently set to wide 1121. Uh, we'll just leave that for the time being. And uh, the transmit rate limit and let's see, uh, we'll leave those both set to default there. So the only thing we need to do is, now that we got those settings, is go ahead and enable our iGate. Now, I'm also going to take me off of the screen here. So let me get that done. And now we're looking at APRS.fi, um, and I've already pulled up K4 Fund's uh, call sign right here. You'll notice right here in the middle that uh, the last packet that it heard was at 10 o'clock. So uh, it's now 1022. So if this uh, eye gate is working, that timestamp should update. Let's go ahead and give that a try. We'll just go ahead and send another beacon right like that. And let's go ahead and check our log here. Let me get back on the phone to the log. And you'll see that we were digipeated and it sent that packet to APRS IS. And then if we look at the screen right here, you will see that that updated at 10.22.45 local time. And that's how easy it is to get digipeating and eye gating set up with APRS Droid. So you've got to determine what works best for your situation. Do you want to eye gate things or do you just want to digipeat? Whichever way you go, I think it's pretty cool that we can take a device that is always in our pocket and turn it into a digipeter and potentially an eye gate as well. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.